Good morning, everyone. I, I picked that song, well, because number for two reasons. Um, one, one is because Surrender. I thought, well, that's a good song for, for this month. And also, uh, I wasn't here two weeks ago because it was my um, granddaughter's fifth birthday. And she is like, you know, like most little kids, Frozen is like <laughs> everything. I mean, th this was the first, this birthday, she didn't do a Frozen theme. She usually did. The, in fact, she doesn't have very long hair. And somebody made her a braid out of yarn so that she'd have that long ponytail. <laughs> and, but Frozen, you know, but I love that. Um, and, and it made me think of my childhood. You know, don't let them in. Don't let them see be the good girl you always have to be. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Well, now they know. <laughs> um, and I like that because I think back on my childhood. And, you know, I don't think it's such a great thing being the oldest <laughs> child in the family. You know, I, I look at my two sons. Um, Ryan was the firstborn, and then Corey came second. A little about two and a half years later and do you ever notice how the second child is does everything the older sibling does I watch now my granddaughter who's five and then my em, that's Olivia and then Emma's like two and a half and Emma and anything Olivia does Emma's right there doing Corey my youngest son when he was three he was riding a two-wheeler without training wheels when he just turned three. And it was because he wanted to keep up with his bigger brother. You know, and so I look back on my childhood and I had nobody to compare with. I just wanted mommy and daddy to love me. And so I didn't want to do anything to disappoint them. And I, I don't know that I really discovered who I was. I surrendered all the time to what it was they wanted me to do or, or be. And, you know, when you think of surrender sometimes, it can seem like a weak thing. You know, I surrender, like holding the white flag, I surrender. But sometimes surrendering is just let it go. Let it go. You know, those of you who were here for the talent show, that's what I loved about uh, Reverend Tiffany's thing. You know, you can have one opinion or another opinion, I won't say the word, but you don't have to be a jerk about it. You, you know, you can just listen, you know, to them and go, okay, and then share your opinion or whatever. But anyway, back, back to this. Um, anyway, I love this. So the whole thing with Frozen is the older sister had this thing with the ice and freeze, and she, and she hurt her little sister, Anna, one time, so she wanted to keep her powers to herself because she didn't want to know. How many of you at times have kept your power to yourself? Have Yep, you know, and um, it's interesting it's women raising their kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Um, um, it's funny how some distance makes things seem small and the fears that once controlled me can't get me at all. And I know I came to a point in my life where I, I kind of became a rebel. I kind of became a rebel uh, about things. If I would see in the workplace injustices, um, I remember my, my first real job was at Bank of America. And I worked in what was called the note department where they did the loans. And I did the credit checks. And... And, and stuff, and I had um, a manager of my department who had been with Bank of America forever. She knew everything in the bank, and she was the manager of my department. And then some young college kid comes in, got his degree, and now she's training him, and everybody's training him for a pay that's gonna be twice what she was making, and he knew nothing. She could do anything in the bank. And I started to see things that, wow, there is some kind of injustice sometimes. And, um, and, and so, you know, you look at things. And then I left Bank of America, and then I went to San Diego Trust and Savings, and I was in tr charge of the whole department there. And if you know me, I love to laugh. 
you know, and I have a cackle. I am the first one to admit I have a cackle. It is annoying, but I can't help it, okay? I'm not going to be full, I'm not going to surrender my laugh to make you happy. That's just who I am, all right? And so anyway, um, one day I was in, my, my assistant was in, we were typing, our desk, our typewriters faced each other, and she was telling me about her wild weekend, you know. And um, the manager walked by, who, by the way, only got the job as the manager because his brother-in-law was a president in San, downtown San Diego. And this guy was a principal. He knew nothing about banking. Anyway, he walks past my desk one day, and we're laughing. He goes, and the bank's not open, okay? So I'm not cackling when it's open. And she's telling me something, and I'm laughing. And he walks by and goes, hey, Stop laughing. And I thought, oh, yeah, he's just joking. And it came back, he came back the other way, and he said, I told you to be quiet. Stop laughing. And I'm telling you in that moment, I was done. I, I you know, and so, so what I want to tell you, and so and anyway, that's what got me to go to court reporting school. But because I said, I'm not going to have idiots tell me what I can and cannot do when I know I'm not doing anything just because you don't like my laugh or whatever. So I left. I'm going to be my own boss. Um, but but my, my point is about this because it's surrender. And I think surrender means looking at what... It's not like beating yourself up about, oh, what should I do? I didn't, what should I do? I knew that if I'm not happy, then it's up to me to make the change. I don't have to think about, you know, is this going to be a mistake? And in fact, when I quit, home office wanted to make me a lending officer. They wanted me to stay. Now, that would have been a huge pay raise and stuff, but I'd already had two experiences with corporate stuff, and I said, Gee, thank you, but no, th I mean, I wasn't mean about it. I appreciated it, but no, you know, and, and so sometimes we have to make big decisions in our life. And I think when I think about surrendering, it's surrender to the drama around your decision. What is it that's important to you? What is it that, yeah, this might be painful, this could be risky. But there's that something that within you that knows that you need to change. Can I have my first slide? I, I love getting stuff off of Facebook because this, my dear, is the greatest challenge to being alive, to witness the injustice of the world and not allow it to consume our light. Think about that, right? You know, and, and I, when I saw this, I, I'm looking at, what's been going on in the last month and a half. We had the shooting in Vivaldi. We had the 4th of July shooting. And, and so that's important that, we, you know, we can witness the injustice, but don't allow it to consume your light because that's what we're here for. Don't surrender to, to the things that are painful or awful to see, but how are you going to show up in the world despite that? I heard something this morning. I don't know who said it. It was, it was um, oh, it was, anyway, it was somebody talking about this guy that was an uh, inspirational speaker that everybody listened to, and he came in, and he pounded the desk. He said, oh, my God, I saw a miracle this morning. I experienced a miracle. And they're all, what, what? He said, I saw the sunrise. That is a miracle every day. These are things that we take for granted. Oh, the sun's coming up. Oh, the sun's going down. It is a miracle that we are participating in. So when there is darkness in the world, what is ours to do? It is to be the light. Do not be consumed. Do not surrender who you are to that. My next slide. Yesterday I was clever and wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. Right? On. right? Isn't that a good one? Because crap happens every day. I'm sorry. Things happen. You can be consumed by it and let it suck you in, or you can say, 
thank you for showing me this. I'm going to look, as Butterworth said, I'm going to look out the other window and, and step into who I am. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And, and step into your, your power. Um, I think of two major things in my life. My job was the one thing that was a major thing that I had to make a decision on. Probably the next biggest thing was leaving my husband. I had a seven-year-old son and a five-year-old son, and they adored their dad. And, and when you get to that point, you know, we, and at, we had been married 20 years at that point. And, there, you know, when you first get married and you don't have kids, think somebody does, it's like, oh, well, whatever, you know, you look the other way. Well, for me, when, and that's why I never wanted kids, because I knew that it would be different if I had children. Because things that Bill did, it's like, okay, you know, but when we had kids, it was like nails on the chalkboard for me. And as, just as an example, um, Ryan was in first grade at St. Teresa's, and, you know, at Lent, they would have like a little carton where they, collect, they save money for the poor kids for the Pope. And uh, one day, the ice cream man was coming through the neighborhood, and he goes, Daddy, Daddy, I want to get a Popsicle. Can I have, you know? And my husband said to him, well, where's all your money? You've been saving money. And he goes, oh, but I gave it to the poor kids. And my husband said to him, no, you think of yourself first. Don't ever do that again. And I'm like, that's not how I want to raise my children. I don't want my children to be raised that way. And so it was never a bad thing. It was, and then something happened. I don't need to go, go into the details. But there was like almost like, I don't know if you experience this, but like, you know, on the, the breaker thing, you turn off this breaker, this breaker, and this breaker, and then finally the last breaker went off. And it was about, it was so peaceful, though, I knew I couldn't stay. I knew for my sons I couldn't stay, and, and it wouldn't be fair to him. And I told him I wasn't happy, and um, he said, well, I'm happy. And I said, well, how can you be happy if I'm not happy, <laughs> you, you know? And he wouldn't go to counseling, and then he said, I'm not going to counseling. And I said... Okay, and he said, so do you want a divorce? I go, yeah, I guess so. And, but it was like, I never worried about it. I worried about my son somewhat. But I made this commitment to them and myself. I wasn't going to, because I saw a lot of women get divorced, and one man would come in, and then another man would come out. Didn't want to do that to my kids. And so you make decisions. You make decisions. I don't consider it surrendering. I consider listening to what you know is the right thing, and not living in fear from it. And my husband and I, we never divorced. We did separate, and we were friends till, till he, and we never, neither one of us remarried, and we were friends. We still loved each other. I could not live with him or be with him like that, and I didn't want my boys. And what's interesting, my boys have told me, Mom, you did the best thing for us. Thank you. Now, at the time, I remember it was really hard. Corey, the young one, would cry at night and say, Mommy, why isn't Daddy here to kiss me goodnight? It was hard, but I had to surrender to what I knew was best for all of us. And so th that's it. It's like we become wise. We don't need, I didn't, wasn't going to try to change him. I knew I couldn't change him. It wasn't fair to ask him to be different than who he was. Nor could I change and be, be something that I wasn't. That's it. If you try to change, if you try to surrender who you are in that moment, then a piece of you dies and you're not being authentic. You need to be authentic at all times. Surrender to the head stuff, right? Because the head stuff can make you go crazy and, and tell you, you know, put fear into you. But you wouldn't notice these things in your life that aren't working if it wasn't something from a higher part of you telling you, look at this, look at this. Um, so it's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I'm free. Let it go. Doesn't that sound great? There's no rules for you. You can just let it be. Step into that. Look at that light. Just... That light is there within you. You have this divine 
wisdom all the time. What's the next one? I love this next one. I think this is it. So the time has come, right? I, I saw that picture. I said, the time has come. So it's time for each one of us to be that, that spiritual warrior, that light to, to really claim who you are and the power that, that you have to do what you came here to do. Don't surrender your power. Don't surrender who you truly are for that. You know, I have to admit, I have a potty mouth. Okay, that's why I call myself the irreverent reverend. You know, I, I mean, I will drop the f bomb. I'll just be honest because the time has come. You know, so I to tell you these things. You know, and I said something one time. So, oh, somebody swore in front of me. Oh, Dr. Laura, I'm so sorry. I go. Do you think God gives a crap what word you use? And that wasn't the word I used. I just cleaned it up for you. I'm going to be honest here and surrender and say that. But, but truly, that does not define who you are. What's in your heart? What do you do every day in your life? How do you show up? Are you going to surrender to that boss that told you to stop laughing? No, I didn't. <laughs> And, you know, I just, oh, I could tell you stories of things that I have done and said in situations that y you would probably go, oh, my God, we need to kick her out of here. Oh, you, oh, no, no, this one I can't tell you because it's going to be televised. I can't tell you this one. I'll ha we'll have to do it at a party sometime. I'll tell you this story. Um, but, but anyway, I've, and, and I don't know where I got that feistiness because I was the firstborn. I remember I was so worried about pleasing my parents. I would cry the night before report cards came out because I was so worried if I didn't get all A's and B's. My dad would never say anything about my A's and B's, but if there was a C, by God, I heard about it, you know. And... Um, so I, I, I was always wanting to please them. And, and I don't know when that really, I guess it changed probably right after high school. But I was always, you know, I never in high school, you know, here I graduated in 69. So everybody was going to the pot parties and dropping LSD and stuff. I wouldn't go because I knew if I came home and my parents smelled marijuana or alcohol, I would be in deep, deep trouble. So I, so I was always a really good girl. But then I went wild I, <laughs> after I, when I got married. Anyway, um, in fact, I, I'll share this with you. I, my hus my hus I was only 19 and my husband was 30. He just, 29, 30. And I eloped. Didn't tell my parents. Because I knew they were going to fight with me and I don't like to fight. And I didn't want to fight with them, and I didn't want to surrender to them. So I got married, and, and that was really lovely for a while. But, <laughs> but, but I knew that this is what I had to, to do because I wasn't going to fight with them. I didn't need the big white wedding and stuff. I just loved him and wanted to be with him, and I married him. And um, I didn't make it sound it was horrible. I had a wonderful, you know, wedding. When he, when he made his transition because he loved to drink Budweiser. He was a big Budweiser. My son said, we didn't have like a celebration of life. We went out in the patio and put up, we cracked a Budweiser for him and we each had one. And we told stories, wonderful stories about his life. You know, if I would go away for the weekend, he would come and stay at our house with the boys and watch the boys. And so, you know, sometimes when you, you have to make the decisions that are right for you and for him. And, and that was a difficult decision, but it freed him. It, the boys had a great life. I, I was very considerate about that. And, we, and even to the end, I know that if I needed anything, Bill would have been there and vice versa. He knew if I needed him, or he needed me, I would have been there for him. So it, was, it wasn't a bitter, a bitter thing. So the time has come. Every day should be the time has come to step into my power, to own what is it that you want, who do you want to be, and be that, be that. 
and my next slide, because this is so good. Life is too short to wake up in the morning with regrets. So love the people who treat you right, forgive the ones who don't, and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get the chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. Dr. Seuss, is that brilliant? And so, yeah, life isn't going to be always a fairy tale or whatever, but we grow from that. We just let it go, let it be, surrender, but not in a weak way, not like, I'm you know, I'm melting, not like that, but in this way of surrender to what's going on with just as Reverend Dale and Reverend William were talking about, knowing, knowing that everything is unfolding, that these bumps in the road, these, these things that seem like challenges, they're going to make you stronger. They're going to make you realize, God, how truly blessed, how blessed you know, you are and how blessed we are to be here. And because we are here in this world at this time, we are here to shine that light. We are here to step into our authentic selves and to really just feel that love. What, what is your mind, your spirit, your soul telling you is yours to do? and follow that for your highest and best good. Is that my last one? Because the time has come. <laughs> Namaste.